stream. Okay. Um, all right, we are back. All right, we are not. All right, yes, yep, yep. Here we go. Technology is wonderful. There we go. Oh. Hey, we are back. That's that was definitely a big boom. Uh, it knocked out the internet for a second. Did um, I'm amazing. Um, and then I think I fr we froze when I asked if um, these were like five foot squares or so because I was going to step back. Oh sure, yeah, we can count them as such. Okay, so she's just going to come back here. They're pretty close. Yeah. And that's the end of her turn. Fair. Okay. So now I'm going to have the bloodhawks come in. There are there's one who's had a bit of some tail mishaps, and uh, he's not going to be able to fly as far, so that one's going to be uh, flying to Mr. Tree first, oh, and gosh. using its keen sight uh, to attack with its pointyish beaks. Uh, so this is 10 versus Mr. Tree. My AC is 11, uh, 12! Oh my gosh, <laughs> fantastic. Yes. My scales are too tough. Uh, so it stabs right into one of the cloth from that you've draped over your shoulder and it's got only slightly stuck and, and flaps and flaps and is still uh, very close to where your head should be. Uh, but two come in on Dantir. I think they might be attracted to his hat. This might probably <laughs> it's look it, it, it's the same color. I was half expecting it. Mm -hmm. It's that blood red. It's like a bull, you know? Uh-huh. So there's a problem with that. So these blood hawks, they're used to attacking is a pack, and so they get mm -hmm. pack tactics mm -hmm. and advantage, so long as mm -hmm. one of the hawks have an ally nearby. So this will be with advantage. Yep. For the first hawk on Dantir. And that's a 16 versus your armor class. It hits. For six piercing damage. And then the second hawk, its friend... It's ally, your opponent for the moment. It's yeah. vicious birds. This is a 15 versus your armor class. That hits. Then that's another four piercing yeah. damage to you. Four. I... The cleric. Are you dead? No. <laughs> I rolled like max HP when I was doing HP. <laughs> uh, for the cleric, who's seeing these birds come down upon her brother. Uh, there are two more hawks for her. Alrighty. With a 15 versus AC. Does not hit. Fantastic. And a 20 versus AC. That will hit. So while you are shielding yourself from one bird, another dive bomb from very high above, and it's got deep into your armor, and then it's flown back. And the artificer who stepped uh, behind all of her friends and allies has... Uh, <laughs> Nice, clear shots. These birds are like hovering just over your heads, flapping, Perfect. waiting for openings. Uh, so they're not being blocked by any of your allies here. Awesome. So next we go to Dantir. You okay. got two birds on you. I do. I'm going to attack one of them. I'm going to pull out my rapier, and this is going to be a... Uh, actually, there we go. Uh, that is going to be an 18 to hit. Oh, absolutely. And that is going to be 10 points of damage. Oh, that bird is just skewered. Let's out one gurgle of a cry, but it is gone. Hey. Uh, you may have to get it off your rape here, unless you want to keep that for later. <laughs> <laughs> All right, awesome. I can't do two weapon fighting because rape peers aren't light. All right. Um, that is all I am going to do. Okie doke. Torin, your brother's taking out one of these blood hawks. Alrighty, I am going to attack, swing at one of the ones swinging at me because I need to clear my vision, my mace. Some space. A uh, 13 to hit. Oh, definitely knocks one down from where it was okay. just coming in. Alright, so it's three points of bludgeoning damage. And then as a bonus action, I am going to cast um, Shield of Faith on my brother, so you get a plus two bonus to your AC. Thank you, brother. <laughs> I love you. <laughs> Are you, you going to say it back? <laughs> nope. Nope. <laughs> Awkward. <laughs> she, she's saying Reminds this from like my 15 feet away. <laughs> Are you saying it back? 
<laughs> no. <laughs> There's birds. You, you might have. Uh, he might have not noticed. Who knows? Uh, Mr. Tree. There's these I'm... birds all around. Okay, I've got the one that sort of missed me, and I've got just like sort of using it as a walking stick, but I have a, a quarter staff that I'm gonna try and whack at it with. Oh, hey, that's not terrible. Uh, where's my attack? Where's my attack? That's twenty to hit. Oh, definitely. Okay, and that is just keeping a careful eye on the pack. That is, I just did it one-handed because I didn't say. So that's um. Six points of bludgeoning. Yeah, bludgeoning. Oh, that one is knocked out of the sky as well. Yes. There's two birds on the ground, three in the air. Stop them. <laughs> are you okay with where you are, Mr. Tree, or do you want to get closer or farther from where these birds are? There's the body, of course. Yeah, I'm good right here. <laughs> <laughs> there is a body. Then that means top of the round. Hannah, you've got clear shots to a lot of things. Uh, yes. Snow is coming down, but not in a way that it blocks any of your vision. I'll attack this other one that's on Dantier. Mm -hmm. uh, Dantier, watch the hat. Mm -hmm. 18 to hit. Oh, definitely. And 8 piercing. Uh, there used to be a bird there. <laughs> <laughs> now it's just... There's, like, there's like two wings that like come down <laughs> very lightly onto the snow. <laughs> feathers just kind of rain down <laughs> <laughs> and that's it. that's it that's me okay uh with these two remaining ones here uh there's definitely one that's trying to take out a further threat and so Torin, these birds are going after the very loud noisemaker. <laughs> so you do get an opportunity attack against one of them, at least. All right. I will swing at the one that I had previously hit with my mace again. Fair. With a 14 to hit. Oh, definitely. And, and five bludgeoning. With five bludgeoning, it is going to be knocked out. And uh, the other one is going to have to contend on its own without any advantage. So on Hannah, our mm -hmm. terrific gunsmith artificer. Oh no! Yeah, that oh, no. that that hits definitely. Yes, a critical hit from a bloodhawk <laughs> does four piercing damage to you. Oh, ouch. Uh, just as you're aiming down the sights, this bird is getting bigger and bigger until it is this big, right on you. You feel it. <laughs> Dantier, there's one bird down next to you. There's one that Torn has taken down. Mr. Tree's knocked one out of the sky. And you see Hannah behind you. Uh, maybe just the slightest yelp as she got bird bit. Hey, um, does that count as flanking, moving there? It would, but there's no bonuses in 5e for flanking. Oh, that's right. Just a home rule thing for other that, people. That's right. Um, well, I rolled an 18 to hit. Oh, um, you see this so that's bird. That's going to be 20, 23 to hit. This bird is a target. This is not getting away. <laughs> and that is going to be uh, max damage. Oh, so gosh. 11 points of damage. <laughs> How does Dan Tier feel about birds? We had minor uh, discussions. <laughs> I, d these have really pretty feathers. These have really pretty feathers. If they weren't trying to kill us, these would be really, really pretty birds. But they're trying to kill us, so they need to die. Yeah, well, two of them have been smashed. Uh, one of them's been knocked down. Uh, another one just obliterated. You've skewered too, so there's a lot of nice feathers around. Uh, and that is all the bloodhawks that uh, have not scattered to the winds. So that's your out of initiative. You can go well, where you like. To the body. We didn't die in our first combat. <laughs> <laughs> can I can I put all of the dead birds in my chest? Of course. Yeah, you we, can. we should keep those. I'm, I'm gonna keep a feather. Yeah. I'm going to put it in the hat. Okay, it's you're like going to take bloody... one of the nice pinions? Yep, yep. It's going to go in the hat. Also, um, I'm hurting. <laughs> yes, but you're not potentially dead, so I'm, I'm going to go attend there. to the dead body. <laughs> Torrin just walks away. <laughs> <laughs> He's fine. Brotherly love is a difficult thing. I could heal you if that... you really wanted. I would like that. All right, but you're going to have to sit through a lecture because it's a right. healing word. Wonderful. <laughs> I'm going to do healing word. You're going to get four health back. Nice. That is 
about half of what I have currently. So, <laughs> nice. All right. Uh, Torn, you've walked over to that body that was uh, there at the base of the tree. It does look like, from the build of it, it's only partially decomposed male, and by look at the ears, probably human. They're mostly round. Does it fit the description that um, Gregory gave us? It's possible. As one of the two? The it's face possible. has mostly been eaten away. What about the hair? Didn't he say he had like, black hair or something like that? Oh. In that case... This one has brown hair. Oh, perfect. It's, it's tucked good. into it's like a small ponytail. He might have been trying to be in, but no. <laughs> um, Certainly out. I, I will kneel there and I will pull out um, my prayer book. And it's too windy for incense, but I will give generic last rites since I don't know anything about this person. Hmm. Nice. And hope that his soul goes where he wished it to go. That is fair and kind. Okay. Uh, you have five bird bodies. Well, four bird bodies and a pair of wings. Stuffed <laughs> into a chest that you're carrying. A nice red pinion. And you've put a body to rest. All right. Well, unless there's anything else to go through, your map says that you still have a little bit ways to go. At the end of a chapter, are we level three now? <laughs> <laughs> we killed the blood hawk. Level up. <laughs> um, is there any sort of footprints or trail coming from the body, or is the snow has sort of made it now? just? Oh, actually, you can give me either an investigation if you kind of want to uh, disturb a few things here, kick over some um, fallen pieces of branch, or just perception if you just want to take a look. I will do help out. Yay. perception. Do you want to get advantage or should we do individual? I'll say if you're helping, then you can roll that same skill and we'll count I, that as the help roll. I, uh, <laughs> no. Um, actually, I probably have decent perception. Um, no, it's still just a seven to help out. Okay, your brother is helping. He says he's helping. <laughs> he's helping. He always he does. does. If there were tracks, he has not found any. Uh, you do find... I don't see anything. <laughs> um, around this body, it does look like there's been enough snow to obscure any tracks that have been here. Certainly at least for the last day. So this body has been here for a while. You do find, though, half buried in the dirt... A scroll tube. These are some of the more small leather bound tubes. And it sounds like it has something inside of it as you shake. I will open it up, because, if nothing else, to try to identify who this is so I can let somebody know. Hmm. On the inside of the scroll tube has a single spell scroll, and this one is to create bonfire. <gasps> That's handy. What you got there? What's that? What do you got? <laughs> we have <laughs> a soul who has departed here, who has had no one to mourn it or to see to its passage. I'm sad. I'm Is sad. It I'm, I promise it I'm was? sad. No, it gives me no information. And I'll put it in my pouch. With the others. All right. In that case, where do you go? Uh, uh, heading, continuing on to the camp uh, fur site. Okay. Yes. As as Torin stands up, um, he will use use his brother to help stand up, and will um, give him uh, two two points of health back. Fair for now. Okay. All right. Torin Torrent uh, has given you two more points of health back, and awesome. keep going on your way. 
it's I'll need another group survival check from all of you. The snow is starting to come down a little harder at this point. I'm gonna try and do better this time, guys. I did a lot mm-hmm. better. Yes, I did. Nineteen. Dirty twenty. Nice. Nine. All right. <laughs> so we've got a nineteen, a twenty, an eight, and a nine. So on average, you did all right <laughs> for, for at least this average. this part. <laughs> Teamwork. Teamwork. Go team, go. All right. So at this point, you get to hear the sound of running water in the distance, and soon come to a fast-moving, if shallow, river. And the banks certainly look like they've begun to ice up, and there's flotsam adorning both shores. There's a number of broken branches sitting half in the water. All nearly all their bark is missing. Uh, they could almost ex- pass for twisted bones in this dimming light. The river looks like it's less than 30 feet wide, but as you are close and you feel like some of the spray come up as it hits the branches and, and rocks, that spray makes it feel much, much wider. Is there any, like... Um, I'm Dante's just going to look up and down um, see if there's, A, any point where it narrows significantly, uh, B, if there's any point that looks like it's been used for a nor like a if there's been like a tree that's been set across for traveling or something, something that would make it easier to get across frigid moving water in the middle of a blizzard. That's fair. So a little bit north and south of this river, the it looks like the nearby trees to this shore wouldn't be tall enough to act as a bridge like by mm-hmm. itself. Like none of them are 30 feet wide, but <laughs> There are, or 30 feet tall, uh, but there's enough that are like 15? Ten. Yeah, yeah, like 10 feet, uh, 12, some smaller ones, there's seven. This, and almost none of them have leaves at this point in this winter. Uh, and you think maybe slightly to the south, it looks like the river might be slightly, like maybe two feet shorter on one side. There's like a big rock here that definitely takes two feet off the width. Nice. There's a Plymouth Rock situation. <laughs> we could try making a bridge. And you know what? Have give me a perception check since you're looking up and down those banks. I, uh that is going to be a do, 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 do. that is going to be a fifteen. Nice. So uh, to no surprise to Torin probably, Dantir. Uh, stands up onto that rock, strikes a a fairly Derope. good pose. <laughs> uh, maybe puts a hand on the rapier and looks around, <laughs> seeing seeing uh, if anybody else is watching. Just you know. Down here, so. what do your elvish eyes see? <laughs> <laughs> what do your half elf eyes see? <laughs> <laughs> it's gonna rain. And... <laughs> Lots of snow. Yeah. Dentier, you do spot something. There is a single boot on the far shore from that, from the top of, of our Plymouth Rock situation. Across that section, there is a boot that is laying there on that part of the shore. Mm-hmm. And from the way that the there's not a lot of sunlight coming through, but the way that you're looking down, it doesn't look like this river could be more than 10 feet deep. That there's trouble afoot. I mean, somebody at least has trouble afoot. There's a boot. Or a frozen foot. I know you don't under- uh, get my humor. It's okay. Um, I... There's something over there that might be potentially helpful for finding these people, and also might be a very bad sign if they don't have their boots. Um... We might be, this might be the best spot to get over if we can. I'm not the strongest person in the world, um, but I know you, brother, are very f- much more stronger than I am. Uh, so we might be able to use some of these trees to make a makeshift bridge to get across. I, I can always walk across with a rope to make a sort of railing for you to get across. I'm more concerned about the temperature of the water. 
and the very swift motion of it. It's an uh, adventure. <laughs> I would prefer we, you not to die. We don't have time to build a bridge. How about throw some trees down? Can you throw trees? Me personally, no. Well, I can't throw trees. I can throw you. You can 30, throw us across. You can throw us 30 feet? Probably. <laughs> Not it. <laughs> uh, does, does someone well, have a... I could throw somebody with a rope, and then they could tie the rope off, and then... It'd be, I mean, because we, if, if we have a rope, what's the point? I mean, it's not on the other side of the river. I mean, I think that's a really good plan. Okay. I have rope. You can get thrown across, Hannah. Well, I think I'm taller than a couple. Exactly. Of It'll make it, you'll make the distance better. All right, fine. Sure. Throw me. All right. Well, first secure one end of the rope to something over here. Yeah. Okay. okay tie we'll tie it to a tree. Yeah, there's a fair number of those near here in the edge. It's not tall. I don't know why I'm going along with this. <laughs> <laughs> I said it was a bad idea too. We are actually in agreement about something. <laughs> so the the two brothers are just kind of watching as Mr. Tree ties rope to seems to know a good number of knots. And takes the other in, hands it over to Hannah. <laughs> Um, Hannah will tie it around her waist. Would it help if I like took like a run and like jumped and you like grabbed and threw as I did that? I don't see how it can hurt. <laughs> right? <laughs> I just uh... my intelligence score suggests that sounds great. I mean, it sounds logical to me. Mhm. Mm I've done this plenty of times, by the way. How did it turn out? There was like one see. incident that was uh they got an owie, but I can I can help that, so I mean like the worst that's gonna happen is I'll get a little cold, right? Yeah. Or you die. Mm hmm That's pretty much the actual worst case scenario for you. Mr. Like, Tree is a professional, it's fine. <laughs> you're just throwing me over a river. How wide is it? I, I It's thirty feet. Thirty feet wide. I'm thirty feet and I only weigh hundred and fifty pounds. I'm so going to touch Mr. Tree. And cast guidance on him, <laughs> so that you get to add a D four to your ability check. Okie doke. That's great. All right. So this is. Uh, I think we're gonna worry more about the act of throwing rather than the specific maybe landing zone. Uh, so more ability over accuracy. So for this, I'm going to ask Mr. Tree okay. to be uh, rolling an athletics ability check. And you do okay. get a nice D4 of guidance on that. Yay. And because Hannah is the toss E, uh, we'll get to you in a second. Okay. <laughs> I'm ready for this. My athletics isn't terrible, but we'll see how I'm... I'm not been rolling... It's just like before. gym class. Really. It's just like gym that class. That awful. Oh, that's not terrible. Hold on. Wait, three? Okay, 17. Wait, plus the D4. Plus the plus D4. The D4. Seven, that's a dirty 20. Fantastic. All right. <laughs> Hannah? Yes? Goes flying through the air after having a running start, <laughs> leaping into Mr. Tree's arms. Mr. Tree <laughs> flies her forward as if shot from a spear thrower as in the times of old. Hannah flies 20 feet and then strikes like a stone two-thirds oh, no. of the way through the river. <laughs> Hannah, at this point, uh, do you have a swim speed? <laughs> um, no. Hang on. What is a human swim speed? Probably like what? <laughs> it's going to be half your movement. Okay, so 15. Fantastic. Okay. Good news, bad news. Um, the current is cold. Are the <laughs> it is incredibly cold. I need you to do a constitution <laughs> save right now. <laughs> Just from the shock of landing in this river. Uh, uh, hang on. Build a bridge, I said. It'd be fine. Nice. That's nice. That is a. Oh, that's great. That is a nice big twenty-four on that Constitution save. So, uh, the good news is, 
that with these uh, wonderfully warm weather gear that's uh, shedding for as you walk, <laughs> most of your inner clothes and gear stay uh, dry, surprisingly. At least they have been tempered enough and you tied it tight enough that everything from like upper chest and uh, most of your waist stays dry and it's just like up to uh, up to your knees where just water has started to soak in. And how tall was Hannah, by the way? Hannah is 5'8". Fantastic. Okay. So there's a bit of swimming that's going on here and there's some water that's getting in your face and, and around your neck and that is chilling you to the bone where it's touching. Uh, but because you've made it across 20 feet and your movement is good enough for the remaining distance, you only move south in the water about five more feet and mm -hmm. with the remaining distance you drag yourself out onto the other side. That 20 and that 15 were just right for making it up onto the ice on the other <laughs> side. And that constitution, mm, you, do, you do not feel any levels of exhaustion. <laughs> <laughs> you just feel refreshed. Oh. <laughs> like the Arctic, Arctic plunge people. It's a giant bonfire. Maybe someone can create one. <laughs> How's it going? Good. It's a little, it's a little cold, but uh. Is there something you can secure it to over there? There's a boot. Give me a second. <laughs> There's a boot. There's a boot. There, there, Is there would anything be. I can Yes, there would be some of the other shorter trees, so they're they're taller okay. than you are, but they're not super sturdy. I will tie it to one of the stronger looking trees. Fair. Uh, so there's enough part of that rope, uh, and with that tree, you can get this as tight as you want, uh, but it certainly does get to stretch out across the river. So you've got a good okay. rope line for everyone that can be above the water if you need it to be. Yes. All right, and I'm gonna pick up the boot while they're all coming across. Nice, um, fair. Uh, roll me an insight check. An insight, 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 insight. We gotta insight the insole. Ah, this boot. All right, uh, this one does look like it. There's a bit of a scratch in it. There's a tear, like near where the ankle section is. And it looks like there's some blood here on the inside of it. And on the inside check, just update some notes here. Fantastic. Okay. <laughs> All right. Uh, uh, with that, what are the rest of you doing? <laughs> You got so well, one teammate across, across the river. You're we gonna, we... using the rope to make sure you don't slip and fall and get carried downstream. Okay. And you're going to walk across the river. Okay. You're going to tightrope it or are you just going to walk? No, it? you're going to walk through the water. Okay. Through the freezing cold water. Wonderful. Can I go first? Just... Yeah. Okay. Because sure. I have the best idea. <laughs> Again? Yes. So, I like two I, in a row. I mean, thing where I can sort of just so long as I've seen it and it's like a tiny enough creature I could become it. I don't know why I went country there. But would it be fair to say that I have seen a giant lizard before? <laughs> Plenty of times. In okay. Every I family wild... photo album. <laughs> It's a big giant lizard on the crest. <laughs> wild shape into a giant lizard so I can like carefully go across the rope and it has like sticky fingers. <laughs> Since the rope's above the water, there's not even going to need for a constitution check. Uh, you're not going to be that lizard for long enough, I think, for the cold to affect you. And this is... Uh, this is like the very friendly lizard that's helping keep his yeah. girlfriend lizard out of all the harm and anxiety. <laughs> so when you get to the other side, Hannah's going to look at you and go, 
you couldn't have done that before and been a fish so that I didn't get cold? I'm just a lizard right now, so I'm just... <laughs> like, licks one of its eyeballs and then... <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> All right, two have crossed. Okay. It's one, two. Okay. Um, I'm going now. I hope you make it across. Bye. I just, I just want to ensure you have the full experience... So that you can go back and tell your mother. Don't worry, I will. Uh, wow, that's awesome for a uh, constitution check, because I'm guessing we're going to have to make one. Absolutely, uh, that's very appropriate. That is a dirty 20. Um, yeah, that's fine. This oh. is uh, probably not going to make it into Dantier's Tales as uh, <laughs> true as most of the other parts, but Dantir, uh, with your waist, uh, you have water up to your armpits. Uh, and your hat is going to be fine, and the feather Thank in God. it... Thank God. It's the important good. bit. Uh, but everything else is just getting soaked. Um, you did get across uh, Mr. Woolbuck's, uh clothes so that most of your inner stuff is keeping warm. But again... The pants and the legs, uh, unless you've done anything special for that, uh, you're you're getting very very cold in the nethers and uh, just shaking it off as you get onto the other side. The polar plunge. Yep. <laughs> I do not understand why people do that. And yeah, you've, now you've had to. All right. There's there's three on the other side now. Various states of shivering, eye licking, uh, <laughs> Torin. Now Torin would like to try something that he has seen someone else do. Um, not necessarily in this... It's, it's fairly swift moving water. Moves about five feet downstream. <clears throat> okay, so he is going to hook his a toe, like half of his foot, through where he would normally put his arm on his shield, and okay. then angle it down and sit on top of it. I see. And pull himself across that way. Oh, uh, okay. This is going to be fair skilled. Rather than relying on your strength, this is going to be the... Is this a floating shield? Well, it's a giant shield. It's mostly just to keep... I figure with the ballast, just to keep him above, he's going to be holding himself with the rope. Okay. Just to keep himself from getting in the water more than floating. Let's try this out with then an acrobatics roll as you're more about oh. keeping your balance on the shield okay. and keeping as much of you out of the water as possible. Oh. <laughs> so with the seven, uh, there is a great amount of water that starts piling up into the shield. Like you're, you're halfway across, like you're 15 feet across here and you're holding on to it. It's working out fine until like there's just this burst of water real quick that starts splashing on the shield and that kind of tips the lip over mm. and then the shield becomes like a catch for a lot of water um, and so you are soaking uh, when you get across to the other side uh, yeah, with sorry. like some that has gone down your coat uh, so your DC for your constitution save is going to be a little bit higher but go ahead and get, roll me one of those oh no <laughs> <laughs> So on the other side, uh, where most of you have like knocked the water off your legs, and though it's been Press brisk, digitationed. oh yeah, clean that up. Yep. Uh, uh, Torin is standing there, uh, sodden from head to toe, uh, with a shield that like has started to grow some ice onto parts of it, uh, as well as like parts of Torin have started to grow some ice onto it. <laughs> Uh, Torin, you have one level of exhaustion. Okay. I'm I'm gonna clean clean him off. Uh, press the digitation and such. That's fine. Uh, get you know warm up a little bit because apparently it warms too, which is nice. Oh, it can warm like what a pound of flesh? A, a, a cubic, uh, one cubic foot of non-living material. Oh, nice. it can't warm up a person. Please, <laughs> please don't, but I can start warming up like... Don't heat my armor. 
I'm not. I'm keeping like your cloak. I'm not touching you. I'm it's not. Like, it's like at the, um, at the theme parks after the water rides and you have to pay like $10 to stand in those giant air blowers. Yeah. That yeah. Like, yeah. Just like a general thing. Okay. Um, Fair. <laughs> like your cloak is warm and then the rest of you is shivering. And so you have this uh, one level of exhaustion. So you do have disadvantage on um, ability checks. And that's just until you can either get warmer or uh, in some other way fix things so that you can roll another constitution save. Okay. All right. Uh, at this point, though, mm, you made it to the other side. There's a boot. Uh, go ahead and everyone roll a survival check. Oh, boy. You've gotten pretty close. That is going to be a oh, one. God. Torrent shivering. Yep. <laughs> Thirteen. So that's a one. Thirteen. Uh, sorry, what did uh, Kendrick get? Twenty-one. Twenty-one. Okay. And for Hannah? Uh, fourteen. Oh, fantastic. Okay, so fourteen, thirteen, twenty-one, and the four. All right. You do spot from here two tracks and they are not very fresh but they were made deep enough that there's clearly wagon tracks here and then a couple of uh, booted tracks here one of them looks like it only has one boot there's also to the eyes of Dentier most other persons would have missed it. Uh, Torin probably wouldn't have, but he's dealing with his own shivers. You're reminded of winters at home when your parents were still both around, and the way that your dad would not almost make any tracks on any snow as everybody around they'd have to trudge through a foot two feet and your father was always just lightly tracing a post you have found some elf tracks here as well and they do head in the same northeast direction they also head back towards Arashnau okay um, I will point them out to everybody okay um so at this point, you're going to be getting to a campsite and fairly soon. So I'm going to say that at this time in our stream, would you mind if we take a nice six-minute break? That's fine. All right. That sounds perfect. I'm going to switch this over to a nice waiting screen, and then I'll see you back in a few minutes. Perfect. Awesome.